Boy! Grandad? What is that boy? Oh, yeah, it's New World. It's, I'm gonna... New World? <laughs> Pathetic. You kids and your shallow corporate so-called MMOs. Back in my day, we had meaningful gameplay with huge emphasis on community. None of this pay once and play forever bollocks you kids are privileged with today. When I was only 12, I had to work two jobs just to maintain my subscription fee, and even then, I had to play for a minimum of 18 hours a day just to make enough money to prepare between the brutally difficult encounters. You kids these days know nothing of MMOs, and it's all down to corporate. Damn you, corporate. You ruined my life. Hey, what up, boys? So after all the garbage corporate have been handing us lately, I'm beginning to become suspicious that these giant profit-based entities don't actually care about the franchises in the same way we do. Countless MMOs have fallen to insidious monetization, but lately we've been hit by three huge disappointments. New World, Lost Ark, and the recently announced Dragonflight has made me lose faith in our giant corporate overlords. But it does seem, at least after New World and Lost Ark, people are beginning to understand the deceptive practices of marketing. So if it turns out corporate are just deceiving us for our money, what are we left with? Indie developers are not exactly free of controversy when you consider games like Chronicles of Alaria and Dreamworld, but there are a few promising projects out there that do seem to be pushing past the skepticism to bring their dreams to life, and I'd like to discuss those with you today. But before we get into that, grab yourself a Copa Cola, because I am of course referring to Ashes of Creation, but there's also another game that I want to give an honourable mention. Pantheon Rise of the Fallen. Both of these are passion projects that have been brought to life through the will of Kickstarter, but one of them has had a pretty rough development cycle that I want to address directly. Now, with all that bollocks out of the way, let's begin, shall we? So I think most of us can agree that there's at least one or two indie games that cost less than $5 in our legendary tier for best games ever made. These are games like Terraria, Minecraft, Valheim, etc, 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 all games that popped up out of the blue, took the gaming space by storm, and will forever set the bar as the best in their genre. This has never been the case for MMOs, with the exception of one nostalgic game. And I'll stall for a couple of minutes with pointless dialogues to give you guys a chance to guess which MMO I'm referring to down in the comments below. Because MMOs are such a colossal project with an incredible amount of funding, skill and upkeep required, a small indie company cannot just decide they want to make a groundbreaking MMO. <laughs> but MMOs need a massive team of diverse, highly skilled coders to prevent game-breaking bugs. Isn't that right, Amazon? They also need a quality art team and solid world building to help immerse the player into the world. Something Amazon actually did right. On top of that, combat, customization, and endgame need to be compelling enough, which not only requires some foresight, but the devs need actual experience playing MMORPGs. Something I don't think Amazon ever had. But most importantly, MMOs need an incredible amount of funding to generate hype through marketing to ensure the game reaches as wide of an audience as possible. Amazon's speciality, apparently. There are of course loads of other important components for MMO development that are highly required and I'm sure I'll receive a barrage of comments telling me I'm a dumb bitch for skipping over them. But now I want to refer to an MMO that had almost none of these as an indie company but still managed to garner such an incredible community and brought to life a world that touched nearly all of us at some point in our lives and still remains within the top 10 currently popular MMOs here in 2022. 
RuneScape was my first venture into the world of online games. It was made by a tiny-ass company utilising JavaScript of all things to create possibly one of the most scuff-licking-ass games in the history of games. However, despite this scuffed aesthetic, RuneScape absolutely slapped as an MMORPG that changed the lives of many young kids in my generation. Me included, of course, because without RuneScape's incredible world teeming with personality and passion, I would never have graduated to World of Warcraft when I did, and I never would have experienced the community-based gameplay MMOs gave us back in 2004 to 2008. As much as I respect the early MMOs that pioneered the genre, like Ultima Online, EverQuest, and Camelot, without RuneScape making the genre somewhat mainstream for the younger generation, I'm confident WoW wouldn't have exploded quite like it did during The Burning Crusade and Wrath of the Lich King. Which leads me onto the subject at hand, passion. Something sorely missing in today's currently popular MMOs, replaced by soulless corporate entities who churn out any old garbage to keep their long dead franchise alive. So let's discuss this in regards to today's indie developers. So out of all of our currently popular MMOs, there's really only one left that isn't plagued by corporate manipulation and still continues to release regular content that stays true to the lore threads sewn during the inception of their franchise. Guild Wars 2 is very quickly rising up the ranks of an MMO everyone should give a second chance as their new expansion, End of Dragons, is highly rated as one of their best and finally concludes the 15-year-old story that ArenaNet have been telling. Now, Guild Wars 2 isn't exactly free of corporate manipulation, as it is mired by a cash shop that is full of convenience-based microtransactions. However, this is kind of offset by the fact that there isn't really any end game to actually push for, so pay-to-win doesn't really apply. Playing a Barbie doll simulator isn't exactly winning now, is it? In fact, I think it's far more accurate to say that you're losing at that point. On top of this, all gold is convertible to cash shop currency, so should they actually add any cosmetics that you like the look of, or should you just want to buy an experience boost for whatever reason, you can just buy it all for free anyway. It's an odd grey area, but I still acknowledge that a lot of people are put off solely by the fact that a cash shop exists in the first place. Corporate publishers are always the bane of the MMO genre. In almost all cases, our beloved MMOs have fallen under the reign of corporate decisions that are based off profit, rather than creating a genuinely fun gameplay experience. Be it either increasing retention and playtime through arbitrary time-gated mechanics, compromising progression by adding pay-to-win and RNG enhancing, or just straight up shredding a development team to pieces just so they don't have to pay them. What we need is an MMO made by passionate developers like ArenaNet, but without the blackened shadow pulling the strings behind the scenes. And the only way that we'll ever get this is from a crowdfunded indie developer. Currently, there are only two that show promise. All others that have attempted this have been completely outed as scams or are dead in the water, and I wanted to talk about what this genre would look like should either of these indie MMOs actually see the light of day. Before jumping into the meat of it though, a regular discussion point for us in the Discord at the moment, which is linked in the description below, so come join our copium-based discussions so I can eventually ban you for not sharing my opinion. We've been talking a lot about Pantheon Rise of the Fallen lately, and as much as I personally respect what this project is trying to do, it is in a rough spot. Sadly, their funding is running on fumes and progress updates are acceptable at best. I pray for this game's continued development, but I do want to contrast it with Ashes of Creation because I think the way they both present their progress is interesting to discuss. Now, before we get into that, for the love of God, if you are a Pantheon Andy, please let your honest thoughts for this project be known in the comments below. I haven't looked too deeply into this project yet because there's only so much copium I can store inside my brain cells. And it's extremely important that any information that I convey in this video is confirmed or corrected. I don't want to spread any misinformation about this project just because my low IQ brain cannot comprehend its 10 years of development. So with that said, let's farm a bunch of downvotes with biased, 
unfiltered and controversial opinions. As mentioned before, funding is an important part of an MMO's development, and one of the major reasons why I'm so convinced with Ashes of Creation's legitimacy isn't so much the gameplay systems, the node bollocks, or whatever other buzzwords they're trying to sell us. I am highly invested because Ashes of Creation is already fully funded to completion. Now there is a bunch of negativity towards Ashes for their monthly FOMO cosmetic packs, and that's quite understandable. Despite my un healthy knowledge for this game's development, I still do sit within that sceptical party of negative Andes who hate the fact that these packs exist. I know why they exist, I understand their purpose, and I've dedicated multiple videos to try and explain it to people, but that doesn't mean I have to agree with it now, does it? Which brings me onto the subject of long-term monetization. Both Pantheon and Ashes are going for a subscription-based model, something frowned upon in this era of free-to-play MMOs, but personally I think the only way to fairly monetize an MMO is to charge a monthly sub fee for them. These are literally the definition of live services after all, it's perfectly reasonable to expect a maintenance cost, right? I've got no idea why this new generation of gamers are foaming at the mouth at basic logic. However, beyond the subject of a sub fee, Ashes and Pantheon slightly differ when it comes to the price of entry. You see, Pantheon Pantheon is going for the traditional box price plus sub fee route, which is pretty standard and expected, but Ashes of Creation is instead going for no price of entry, just the sub fee, but are supplementing their long term funding with an in game, non pay to win cosmetic store. As funding has been a major topic in today's video, more so than the actual video title apparently, but hey, I need to keep that clickbait rolling for relevancy, I will pose a question to you, my dear viewer. What kind of monetization method do you think is most successful for an MMO? We've seen many types of success over the years, as sad as it is to hear it. The pay to win model is very successful as it's kept BDO's controversial open world PvP alive here in the West since 2014. Additionally, subscription models have been highly effective for the Western audience for obvious reasons, with a cosmetic store almost becoming mandatory for all MMOs in the current year. How do you think Ashes of Creation will fare double dipping into both a sub fee and an in game store? And do you think Pantheon's player base will be large enough to sustain itself with only a one time box price and sub fee? When I look back at the money I've spent on MMOs, I tend to fall into the category of spending next to minimum. I've always played MMOs for as little money spent as possible because I've never really had disposable income. However, despite that, I do still feel like I should be paying for the privilege to play these online games monthly. It just rubs me the wrong way when additional optional purchases are offered on top. But then again, maybe that's just the opinion of a boomer who learned to love the journey more than the destination. But as usual, I am just one nerd desperate for a good MMO. And my opinions mean nothing without yours in the comments below. And hey, why not help out a fellow copium addict by liking today's video because it helps sate the mighty algorithm's soul consuming appetite. No, seriously, please like the video. But no, Pantheon is doing fine and it's definitely gonna make some solid progress soon. And to that I say, listen old man, I know how you feel and I want that nostalgia back as well, but sometimes you just need to use a bit of logic and be cautious before you spend your money. Patience is a virtue for the human race, so subscribe to the channel and get high on copium.